It's quite clear in this case that it came across through animals. Mm -hmm. And almost all our diseases, like HIV, crossed over from chimpanzees in Africa quite some time ago. Ebola came from bats. Uh, this also, uh, with one step in between, came uh, from bats. So it's going to keep happening, particularly with climate change, where we're invading uh, a lot of habitat. You've called uh, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, a creepy little bully. What will it take, do you believe, to convince him that he's fighting a losing battle? I haven't understood his decision to do this from the very beginning. I, I can't claim to have any understanding of it. Um, short of, of, of evil power grabbing. The bankruptcy of a global systematically important bank would have caused irreparable economic turmoil in Switzerland and throughout the world. For this reason, Switzerland had to take the responsibilities beyond its own borders. These efforts have paid off. The Federal Council is convinced that UBS takeover of Credit Suisse has laid the foundations for greater stability both in Switzerland and internationally. Ich danke Ihnen. She joins us live in the studio. Alyssa, this really is the calm before the storm. Not again. <laughs> no. Oh. You know, we're going to go ahead and go to break right now. People in America are not settled with the information that's been given to us right now. So I'm not going to be lining up taking a shot on a vaccination for something that wasn't clear in the first place. And then you all create a shot in miraculous time. It takes years to but create vaccinations. Well, it, it used to take years. Okay, it used to. It, it you know how you years. know how many years were invested in this in this approach? About twenty years of science to get us to be able to do it. Twenty years is not enough, and nine months is definitely not you know, enough for nobody to be taking no vaccination that yeah. you all came up with. The only yeah. reason I'm talking to you right now, as close as we are, is that I've been vaccinated. Right. But if it allow thousands of people like you don't get vaccinated, you're going to let this virus continue to percolate in this country and in this world. Something like the common flu then, right? And, and not like, not it's like much the more flu. serious than the flu. Though. Well, the flu kills a lot of people annually yeah. too. You know how many people bad. died of the flu the last year? I mean, not this year, virtually none, but the previous year, about 20 to 30,000. You know how many people have died from COVID-19 in the United States? 600,000 Americans. Well, you, well, that, well the, the number that you all are giving that died, that's, that's once again, that's you all's number. You gonna pass. Yeah, definitely. Because right. when, when you start talking about paying people to get vaccinated, when you start talking about incentivizing things to get people vaccinated, there's something else going on with that. Something yeah. else, something it, else going I, on. It is that. something going yeah. on. With something it. Else You're going right. On. But I'm glad millions of people like me and most everybody here 
didn't get an incentive. You know what their incentive was? Protecting their health and protecting the city. Well, but that, I, I, well, I won't keep you okay, anymore. It's okay, because my, 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 my incentive for y'all campaign is about fear. It's about inciting fear in people. You all attack people with fear. That's what this pandemic is. It's a fear. It's fear, this pandemic. That's all it is. Mechanical system after we get it together about a day ago. Just see if it bounces. Digit is a robot that is ready for work, a pragmatic tool designed to be useful in the world, to go where we go, work on our terms, do useful things, and interact naturally with us, a safe and friendly robot partner to the human workforce. Our vision, our dream, is to build robots that free us from robotic tasks, that enable humans to be more human. And everything we've built, every breakthrough, is part of the journey towards that goal. That's where Digit is going. Digit is made for work. And a ceasefire now, without a durable solution, would allow President Putin to rest and refit his troops, and then restart the war at a time more advantageous to Russia. The world should not be fooled by any tactical move by Russia, uh, supported by China or any other country, to freeze the war on its own terms. Such a move would violate the UN Charter and delay, uh, defy, excuse me, the will of 141 countries who have condemned Russia's war in the United Nations General Assembly. You can't keep discriminating against some people in the briefing room because you don't like them, you don't like them. So you have a choice. No, you, you, you have a choice. You have a choice. A number of people okay. in the briefing room, and I'm saying that that's not right. This is not China. This is not Russia. This is the United ah! States. This is the White House. No, it's been seven months. I sent you seven months. Russia, Mr. Here too, pal. It's been seven months. You guys have not done anything for me. If you have grievances, you should bring them to her later. I have done that. I have done that. All my emails are there. I've been here for months. And the press corps is tired of dealing with you. Okay, this is what you're doing. 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 This is and you get questions on the time. But there are time. people in the back who don't get any questions. Don't make assumptions about what the rest of us do. Mind your manners when you're in here. If you have a problem, you bring it up afterwards. But you are impinging on everybody in here who's only trying to do their job. Okay, Sorry. thank you. I'm saying that you shouldn't discriminate against some people because you don't agree with their questions. You're offended by your you questions. Your point. We all heard it. Okay. All right. Guys. As you all know, many of you know, this is the White House press briefing room, a historic room, a room that should have decorum, a room where folks should respect their colleagues and respect the guests that are here. And I understand that there's going to be give and take. That's the way the press briefing has gone for, for decades before me. And I will always, always respect that. But what I will not, what I will not appreciate is disrespecting your colleagues and disrespecting guests who are here to talk, who were here to talk about an incredibly important issue, which is mental health. And what has just occurred this last 10, 15 minutes is unacceptable. It's it, it is unacceptable. So we're gonna, so we're either going to continue the briefing, or we can just end the briefing right here. Okay. Well then, let's go. Now. These are very, very, very powerful technologies. And 
the impact on society is going to be profound, and I don't think any of us understand how broad and how, and how deep it will go. Um, when I look at some of the issues that you all should face, I think the most obvious one is what do you do about how people interact with the platforms? And I'll offer three principles. One is the platforms need to know where the content came from, and you, they need to be able to tell you. This is to avoid misinformation, Russian actors, that sort of thing. You need to know who the, the users are, even if you don't tell the end user who they are. There needs to be some notion of who they are and where they came from. True anonymity hidden behind a paywall would allow nation state attacks. And the third is that these systems have to publish how their algorithms work, and then they have to be held to how their algorithms work. Those simple principles, I think, will help us manage the extreme cases here. Before much of this, um, I got fascinated with the idea of flat earthers. Now, this is an entirely new phenomenon. There wasn't really any moment back in recorded history, not the ancient Greeks or the ancient Babylonians or the Incas or whoever else, who actually wondered whether the Earth was actually flat or not. And Christopher Columbus, they knew the Earth was round. There was no danger he was going to fall off the edge of the world. That wasn't what people worried about when he was setting off to discover the Americas or discover a shortcut to India. Um, but recently, over the past few years, a whole bunch of people have decided that the world is flat. Now, everything we know about science, from the people we've sent to the moon, uh, to the photos we've taken from space, to how we explain day versus night and seasons, we know that the Earth is round. But there, there are a whole bunch of people out there who have decided that the earth is flat. And they hang out with each other, and they find different ways of proving to themselves that the earth is, earth is flat. Now that may not seem like a very serious thing, because someone who believes the earth is flat is not going to necessarily cause tremendous harm to everyone else. I uh, recently paid NIH $400 million dollars do you believe it creates a conflict of interest for the government employees who are making money now off of the vaccine to also be dictating the policy about how many times we have to take the vaccine? Good morning, Senator. Uh, indeed, we recently made, a, before Christmas last year, a $400 million payment to the NIH for a, an old patent that they had developed, not related to COVID, but useful in the development of a COVID vaccine uh, to, to pay them for their work. Uh, it's for the U.S. government to assess how that money should be Do you think it creates a conflict of interest for the same people deciding the policy of how often we have to take the vaccine to also be making money the more times we take the vaccine? Yes it, or no? This is for the government to decide. Senator. You have no opinion on whether or not it creates a conflict of interest? Yeah, yeah well, I don't like that. So we're getting started on the negotiations on how to make sure that every one of us can identify ourselves also digitally just as well as we can with our passport. This of course should be safe, it should secure that your data is private, but it should be really useful if you travel in Europe, if you study in Europe, if you do business in Europe, everything would be more convenient while being safe and value your privacy. You know, Robert, I just realized something. Republicans ain't got no swag. That's why they want to ban, ban TikTok. <laughs> Republicans ain't got no swag. That's the problem. And I mentioned that in the context of engaging young people in the democratic process. It is inappropriate to say that masks are some form of harm, hardship. They are not. They are not cruelty, Matt. They are not in any way restricting people's ability to make friends, to play, to work, to do any of the things. In fact, there are places in the world where even, uh, for example, in Italy, opera singers are on stage wearing masks. There is nothing that you are saying that, that is based in science or medicine. What you are saying is based in right-wing, anti-mask, anti-vax ideology, which has been your calling card throughout the pandemic. All right, let's let him respond. Sorry, I missed, you said uh, you said something and then anti-mask, anti-vaccine? 
Uh, right wing, maybe? Right wing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying very clearly is you have stood with people. You were part of the the push to politicize and to to use the terms restrict and freedom and all of this terminology that is really, I mean, vaccines, vaccine mandates are quite normal. We've always had them. School boards require that students are immunized against measles, mumps, rubella, chicken pox, meningitis. It's a normal thing. not over yet there's still a lot to, we can do i know it sounds like oh god all this stuff is like so negative no if we we still have a chance here We're, there's still more of us than there are of them they need us to comply with with these insane ideas whether it be the, the the social components of everybody can be whatever gender they want or whether it be you know we all have to use these this fake currency and we have to we have to vote in the election for all these people no we can if you know, there's a, there's so many of us out there that they need to control our minds in order to control our bodies. Well, take back control of your own mind. You know, turn off the television. Turn off the – if you're watching MSNBC, Fox News, and CNN, and BBC, and you're getting your information from that, you're getting – you're you're poisoning. You're, it's information junk food, and you're going to have a very – particular view of the world and it's going to be the way they want you to see it in order to you know create this this world in which they want you to live in but you turn that off and you know what happens a lot of your problems go away a lot of this insanity goes away one of the things that in Arcapulco they were they've been heavily in, influential in and, and very um, right over the target and, and especially after the COVID years it's, it's sort of taken on new meaning but the homeschooling side of things they pushed that quite a bit Listen, when you outsource your, you know, your kid, you you send your kid to not a public school, a government school. They said make sure you call it a government school because that it sort of hammers home that like, ooh, government school. That sounds way worse than a public school. Well, it is a government school, and when you when you allow your kids to be indoctrinated with whatever the state decides, whether that be Common Core or you know my two daddies and 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 and, and woke science and and, and things like that you're 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 putting them in in a place where the the state is the daycare center and so you've got to take back control of the information that you're feeding yourself your kids you got to take back uh, you have to take an honest look at what your money is and more importantly maybe what your money isn't and um and and start talking to your friends and family and your neighbors and start to explain this to the extent that you can and and really educate them about where things are headed because it's not too late but boy if we if we allow if we allow this to happen without standing up for ourselves i think we're really going to regret it we're going to get get to a, a place where we've walked into this digital gulag and the and the the door is slammed shut and we finally realize oh no it, i think it might be over that's a regrettable position to be in. Nothing is more expensive than regrets. So do what you can now to uh, make sure that you don't find yourself in that situation. But 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 things are good. Things we can we can. It's not over yet. You know, I want people to to remember there's still fight left in us. You know. If you need a single location to get cutting edge information and keep up with the rapidly changing world around us, tune into Grand Theft World where a forensic historian and a logic professor break down the week's news in depth and in context. There's a ton more there, so go check it out. And don't forget to get your Freedom Vault on the homepage.